Most people think the American shale boom is slowing down, maybe even running out of rock. But it's actually getting faster, because Exxon turned a pile of refinery waste into something that makes fracking 20% better almost overnight. And the strangest part? It wasn't a new drill. It wasn't a new technique. It was the sand. Here's the surprising fact. In 2025, ExxonMobil started replacing regular frac sand with tiny black grains made from petroleum coke, the dusty waste left over when you refine heavy oil. And that waste is now pulling 15 to 20% more oil from the exact same wells. No new acreage, no longer laterals, just better physics. If this spreads across the industry, the U.S. effectively adds another medium-sized OPEC member without drilling a single extra well. That has global consequences. Countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia only break even when oil is near $80 a barrel. American shale can still make money at almost half that. And lightweight propants push that gap even wider. So how does a waste product do that? Think of fracking like trying to pry open a granite countertop using a fire hose full of sand. You drill down, you turn sideways, then you blast water and sand into the rock at thousands of psi. The water opens the cracks, the sand wedges them open, and the oil in those cracks flows back toward the well. But here's the catch. Standard sand is heavy, really heavy. As it travels through the fracture network, it settles quickly, like marbles sinking in a bathtub. It props open only the first few hundred feet from the well. Everything deeper closes again. And that means you leave 80 to 90% of the oil behind. Now replace those marbles with something that floats more easily. Petroleum coke grains are 40 to 50% less dense than sand. They ride the fluid like ping pong balls instead of marbles. They stay suspended for longer. They travel deeper into the formation. And they lodge into tiny fractures sand never reaches. Result? More cracks held open, more pathways, more flow, and more barrels for the same cost. Think of it as doubling the number of straws poking into the rock. Early field data from more than 400 wells across the Permian showed first-year production up roughly 7 to 18 percent, with a few pads hitting a little over 30 percent. And because these grains come from what used to be a waste stream, the cost increase per well is modest, a rare win in an industry where everything usually gets more expensive. For next year, 2026, U.S. output likely pushes past 14 million barrels per day. Global supply remains strong, even if oil settles in the $60 to $70 range. Russia's budget feels the pressure first. Every $10 drop costs Moscow tens of billions. And looking further to 2030, lightweight propants spread across the industry. Patents leak, license, or get reinvented. The Permian settles at around 9 to 10 million barrels per day, instead of declining like many predicted. OPEC plus spare capacity becomes permanent. Their ability to weaponize oil gets weaker. And if we look long term to 2040 and beyond, improved recovery effectively doubles the accessible U.S. resource base again. Shale stays competitive for another generation. The result is steadier oil prices, usually somewhere between $50 and $80 a barrel. And the geopolitical center of gravity stays anchored in North America. The shale revolution was never really about running out of rock. It was about how cleverly we could prop the rock open. And every time the propant gets 20% better, the finish line moves another decade away. So what do you think happens next? Does the rest of the industry catch up in two years or five?